Hey all, I'm super excited to be joining you all today. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a profile picture collection using Python and Replit. Let's have a quick look at today's agenda. I will start off by giving a definition of what is an NFT and specifically what is a profile picture NFT and then we'll jump into the Python script and start looking at some code. At the end of this session, we will actually generate some profile picture NFTs, so stick around to see what the output looks like. First, let's have a look at what is an NFT. An NFT stands for non-fungible token. Everyone understands the non and the token, but they struggle with fungible. An item is fungible if it can be replaced by another identical item. For example, money is fungible. If I give you £10 today, next week you can return any £10. It does not have to be the exact £10 that I gave you. Non-fungible items cannot be interchanged. An airline ticket is a real-world example of a non-fungible item. It is very specific. Airline, destination, passenger, date and time. You cannot use it to travel anywhere in the world. A more technical way to think about NFTs is as a new file format. We are all familiar with popular file formats such as PDFs, Word docs, MP3 files and JPEGs. What an NFT does is it takes an existing file format and extends this with a record which is stored on the blockchain. It will then record its own ownership and provenance details on the blockchain. The provenance record is a record of its ownership history. This history cannot be tampered with or modified. It can be queried publicly and it is censorship resistant. No central authority can confiscate this asset from you. As the owner of this asset, you can then trade or transfer it to someone else by using your personal cryptographic key. Now let's have a look at what is a profile picture NFT. Today, the largest category of NFTs are profile pictures. Let's have a look at CryptoPunks, the most valuable PFP collection on the market. This collection consists of 10,000 8-bit style unique avatars. The images have been digitally generated from a series of base images and trait layers. The project was released in 2017 and the cost of each punk was initially zero. You only had to pay the Ethereum transaction fees. They weren't the first NFTs. However, CryptoPunks hold historical value as they set the technical standards for the future of NFT contracts. Every avatar in the collection is unique, with some rarer than others. The complete set consists of 9 alien punks, 24 ape punks, 88 zombie punks, and the remaining split between male and female. We will now look at how to generate such a collection using Python and Replit. So, for this section we'll jump into Replit. First, let's have a look at the artwork. I grabbed this artwork from an open source repository for the Moonbirds project. In our traits folder, we can see the individual traits that will build our NFT. Remember, each NFT is unique. The goal of this script is to take these traits and combine them all into unique combinations. As you can see, we've got some beaks, bodies, eyes, eyewear, gradients, headwear and outerwear. If you look in the images and metadata folder, we can see that the folders are currently empty. When we run our script, it will generate the assets and populate them in these folders. Now let's take a look at our main Python script. The great thing about doing this in Replit is that we don't need to install our Python environment locally. Everything just works in the browser. At the top of our Python script, the first thing we need to do is import the modules needed. So we have three modules here, pill, random and JSON. The next step is to set up two arrays for each trait type we looked at earlier. Let's have a look at the beak trait type. The first beak array contains the file name of the trait. In this example, I've made sure that the trait name and the file name are the same. This avoids creating another map between the two. 
The second beak array is named beak underscore weights. The weights all need to add up to 100 for each trait. The weight of each trait specifies a percentage of its corresponding trait in the final collection. For example, here we specified that we want 20% to have the long golden beak and 10% to have the long skeleton beak. We then repeat the same pattern for all the types of traits. In the next section, we define a variable called total images, which determines the number of images in your collection. Most PFP collections have around 10,000 images, but for simplicity and speed, I have restricted this to 50 images. We also create a variable called all images, which will store the image specifications once it's created. In the next step, we define a recursive function called create new image. As you can see from the code here, it's creating an image by adding each trait to it sequentially. Once the final image is created, it checks the all images array to make sure it hasn't already been created. If those trait combinations already exist, then the function keeps calling itself until it has a unique combination. This is an important section of the code that ensures each image is unique. In the next section, we create a master JSON file that will iterate through all our images array and create the metadata associated with each image. In addition, this section will also assign a sequential token ID to each image. In the next section, we actually create the image file for each image. This happens in two steps. The first is to create a composite image for each trait. This needs to happen sequentially in a logical manner. For example, the eyewear trait should come after the eyes trait, otherwise you would end up with eyes being on top of eyewear. The final stage of this section is to create a PNG of the image and then save it to our file system. In the last section, we want to generate a single metadata file that corresponds to each image. I've added a couple of placeholders here, images base URI and a project name. You can chain these to the name of your project and also the server of where your images will be stored after they've been generated and uploaded. Now we can hit run and check our images in metadata folder. As you can see here, we have some beautiful profile pictures that are all unique and algorithmically generated. For each file, we have a corresponding metadata file. For example, image zero has a corresponding file name zero in the metadata folder. And if we open this file, we can see that it has a token ID of zero. The name corresponds to the project name and it has the attributes of the image. So that's all folks. From here, you now need to build a minting dApp and a smart contract. I've added a tutorial in the README section, so feel free to check it out. I'm looking forward to seeing the types of projects you've built using this. You can have a look at this repo by clicking on the link in the description. Please follow me on Twitter, where I share everything I learn about NFTs and Web3 as I continue to venture further 